This is lesson 80, VHDL example 52. And in this example, we're going to write a VHDL program for a clock divider. We'll illustrate the use of this clock divider by designing a modulo 10K counter that's going to count on the seven segment displays from 0000 to 9999 and then wrap around. Okay, this table shows the clock divide frequency starting at 50 megahertz. Remember we have a 50 megahertz clock coming into the FPGA. And we're going to make a 24-bit counter and this table shows Q0 to Q23 uh, starting at Q0 which as you remember is half the frequency of the 50 megahertz so this would be 25 megahertz this would be 40 nanoseconds. We show the period in milliseconds here and we'll show the frequency in hertz. Q1 will be half of this frequency so Q1 will have a frequency of 12 and a half megahertz and it keeps going down for every Q and if you finally get down here to Q17 for example we'll be all the way down to 190 hertz. We're going to use this one to uh, drive our seven segment displays. That is, we'll multiplex it at a 190 hertz rate. Uh, if you get down here to Q19, that's about a 48 hertz one. We'll use this for our modulo 10k counter, so we're going to count 48 times a second, so we'll go fast enough so we can get through 9999 in a, in a quick time. And all the way down to Q23, it's about 3 hertz. So for a 24-bit counter, the last Q, Q23, will actually count once every third of a second, roughly. Okay, we're going to illustrate this by designing this top-level design. This is going to be our clock div. We have clear coming in, and M clock is our 50 megahertz clock on the FPGA board. And we're going to tap off two of the Q's. Q17, you remember, is going to be a clock 190. We'll call it. This is our 190 hertz. We'll make a modified version of our X7 seg B. I'm going to call it X7 seg BC, indicating it's a low frequency clock coming in. You remember the X7 seg B we've used before just has M clock coming in, and we essentially built a 24-bit counter inside here. Well now, we're, since we have a 24-bit counter here, we'll just tap off the Q190 and now we only need a 2-bit counter in here. We'll also tap off clock 48, our 48 hertz one, and that will drive our mod 10k counter, which will be a modification of our modulo 5 counter that we did. We'll just make it a modulo 9999 counter. And then we'll modify the binary to BCD converter that we did back in lesson 34 and make it a 14-bit counter since we have 14 bits coming out here for our 9999. So let's look at clock div first. M clock and clear come in and clock 190 and clock 48 come out. So, we make Q a signal, 24 bits, 23 down to 0, and then it's our usual counter. Now it's M clock and clear coming in. If clear is 1, we'll set Q to all zeros. Here I've indicated, since it's a hex number, since I'm going to have 6 hex digits in 24 bits, I can write it X and double quote 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. I could have put the others go to 0 here as well. And then else, else if clock if M clock tick event and M clock equals one, M clock's the input here, then Q just gets Q plus one. So this is our counter. And then our outputs will tap off two of them. Clock forty eight is Q sub nineteen, clock one nine ninety is Q sub seventeen. So when you use clock div, you can tap off however many you need. Sometimes you'll need only one, maybe clock one ninety. Uh, many of our programs later on will use 25 megahertz clocks, in which case we'll use a clock zero. That gives us a 25 megahertz clock. And you can use whichever ones you need here. 
Okay, here's the modification of our modulo 5 counter. We'll make it a modulo 10,000 counter. Uh, clock clear in Q is now uh, for 13 down to 0, since we need a 14-bit um, output to count to 10,000. Make a signal count, 13 down to 0. And then in the process, here's our asynchronous clear again for the count. Else on the rising edge of the clock, if, now count, remember standard logic vector, so I want to compare it to 9999. Uh, so for convenience I'll just convert integer count. So if convert integer count, that is if the uh, standard logic vector count is equal to 999 decimal, then I want to reset count to zero. Here I use the others. Else we just increment the count. So this is going to be a modulo 999 counter that when it gets to 9999 it will uh, go back to zero. Let me just set Q to count. Okay, well now we need a 14-bit binary to BCD because we want to display this on the seven-segment display in decimal. Well, you remember back in lesson uh, uh, 34 we did an 8-bit binary to BCD converter. We also think that a 6-bit, maybe a 16-bit. So here we'll modify it to be a 14-bit. B now has to be 14 bits. P is going to be, which is going to contain the, the BCD numbers, will be 17 bits. And remember we initialized the Z to 0. Z has to be 32 down to 0 now. And then remember we shifted B 3 bits to the left and then we now we have to go through 11 more times to get to 14 and then we check the units, the tens, the hundreds and the decimals each time seeing if the units is greater than 4 we add 3, you remember the algorithm we shift Z one bit to the left and when you get done P is going to be 30 down to 14 so that's going to be a binary to BCD 14 and now we're going to modify our X7 seg B. We're going to call it X7 seg BC, in which the input, instead of being our 50 megahertz M clock, is now, I call it C clock, which is going to be our 190 hertz clock that we get from our clock div. Other than that, it's the same as we had before, except now our S signal to our 4-bit multiplexer is going to multiplex the four digits on the seven-segment display. We only need to be two bits, so it's going to be one down to zero. Other than this, we will set our A enable just like we did before. You can go back to uh, lesson 28 where we did the X7 seg B to see how this works. Uh, this is going to give our leading blanks. Here's our quad 4 to 1 multiplexer. Here's our seven segment decoder. This is all the same as we had before. Here is the AN code, the same as we had before. And now we just modify this to be a two bit counter. So this is C clock clear. If clear is one, S just gets zero, zero. Else on the rising edge of the clock, S is S plus one. So we'll just build in a little two bit counter here to multiplex the uh, four digits on the seven segment display. So, let's make a top-level design. Here's the top-level design. M clock's coming in. Here are the button. We'll just have button 3 down to 3. This is just for our clear. And then the output of the seven-segment display. We need A to G, A to N, and our decimal point. Then we'll list our components. Here's the component for clock div. Here's the component for mod 10K count. Here's the component for our binary to BCD14, and here's the component for our X7 seg BC. And then we just have to port map them up. We'll need a signal B, 14 bits. We'll need a signal P, 17 bits. We'll need signals clear, clock 48, clock 190. Clear is just going to be button 3. We'll just wire up the clock div, setting clock 190 and clock 48 to the signals here. M clock is the input. We'll port map our mod 10K. Q goes to the signal B. And then we'll 
binary to BCD14. B is the input, P is the output. And then our X7 seg BC, X is going to P15 down to 0. That's the 16 bits, which is going to display the 9999. And C clock is our low clock 190. So that's our 190 hertz clock. So this is the top level design. Uh, this would be a good one for you to uh, compile and implement and download to your uh, uh, FPGA board. And when you run it, the seven segments display should count fairly rapidly from 0000 to 9999 and then wrap around.